Hello World Civ um, 106 classes. Welcome to week five. Well, I definitely um, always enjoy doing Ancient Israel and I was excited to see that I think a lot of you, no matter what your, your thoughts on it, and um, some being confused or maybe just a little uncomfortable with some of the controversialness of some of the topics, you actually really engaged in, in the subject matter and um, I think that that's wonderful. And I think that once we cover uh, Christianity and Judaism um, and then Islam, you're going to just, your eyes are going to open to really understanding a lot more things um, that have been around you your whole life but you didn't really fully understand. So I just thought I'd actually point out some interesting little fun facts. So, um, you learned about YHWH and Asherah. So if some of you caught on to this and others didn't, that, that, that those are the consonants for God's name in the Bible, uh, and, and which in English many uh, will translate as Yahweh or Jehovah. Okay, So to just make it a really quick and in, interesting little uh, added side note discussion of this. Um, so if you remember in this class, uh, in one of the lectures, um, Hebrew doesn't have vowels written in it. Um, for the Bible, they made eventually vowel markings. And the, with Arabic, it's the same thing. For the Quran, um, well, for all of Arabic, they just use consonants, but the Quran has vowel marks. If you get a modern Israeli Hebrew newspaper or you get a modern Arabic uh, newspaper from any of the Arab-speaking countries in the world, um, you will most likely not see any vowel marks. So because God's name was so sacred to Jews, they had a tradition that they would write the name, but they would um, never pronounce it. And so you would see YHWH, and then they would say Adonai or Elohim, uh, Lord or God. Okay? Um, and then so a lot of English translations kind of followed the Jewish tradition and would take the YHWH and they'd put capital L, Lord, capital G, God. Um, and then every once in a while, like the King James Bible would every once in a while, which is really strange, take that and put Jehovah. And that was the anglicized uh, form of the name that ended up being used a lot. So every once in a while you hear this name. So you know there's a major Christian, a branch of Christianity that's not mainstream called Jehovah's Witnesses. They're naming themselves after YHWH, and they consider it very important to say the name. Yahweh is just more basing it on the Hebrew, closer to what the, maybe the Hebrew would be. So it's just kind of guesswork, like right? So we don't actually know exactly how this would have been pronounced. Um, but what's interesting is, is, for instance, you've all heard probably the song Hallelujah, or you hear people say Hallelujah. So there's a classical song, Hallelujah. There's hymns that say Hallelujah. There's a Jeff Buckley song, and, um, you, you know, you, you know saw, probably saw Shrek, you know, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Uh, I mean, you know, and it was, I was originally uh, written by Leonard Cohen. Um, that means, the, it's pure Hebrew. It means Hallelujah, praise be to Yahoo or Yah. That's the shortened form of Yahweh or YHWH. So my name is Joshua. It'd be like saying Josh. Praise be to Josh. I mean, that's, that, that, that'd be the equivalent of saying that. So we're talking about the YHWH God. So even when you're hearing in popular songs, Hallelujah, pure Hebrew referring to this ancient deity of this part of the world. Bob Marley he was a Rastafarian, and Rastafari means Prince Tafari. This was a living monarch of Ethiopia in the 20th century. And uh, so the word Ras meant uh, prince in Amharic language. Uh, uh, it's very close to Hebrew and, and Arabic, by the way, like Rosh or Ra'is, uh, uh, or Ras, head, president, just the beginning of. Anyways. Um, and so the Rastafarian religion basically believed that he was Jesus Christ reincarnate. So you, when you listen to reggae music and Bob Marley would say, Ja Rastafari, 
ja are put and they sing songs about ja and there you hear these voices out it's a shortened form of YHWH so in popular culture even in, in our religious in various breakoffs of Christianity and Judaism the legacy the leg legacy of this God coming from this part of the world is is very vast it's very quite mind-boggling and I think it's very interesting now for some of you this is the true God and Keep in mind that some of these ways of mixing the idea of God having an Asherah, like no matter how it was interpreted in the, in the, the videos we watched, may not, wouldn't really set right with a lot of purists, if you will, or somebody who's wanting to have worship of YHWH exclusively. Um, so, um, in any case, that those consonants, it's also called the tetragrammaton, the four uh, letters, Y-H-W-H, shows up thousands and thousands of times in the original Hebrew Bible. And that is, and it's in the names of so many of you, uh, th those of you. So like if your name is Elijah, it's Eli Yahu. Remember, El was a Canaanite god, also the word for God in, in, the, in the Bible. Eli means my God in Hebrew. Yah or Yahoo is a shortened form of Jah or Jehovah, Yahweh, YHWH. Joel, Yoel, the YH shortened form into Ael, God. Yahweh is, the YHWH is God. That's, that's what it kind of abbreviates into Joel. Um, my name, Joshua, Yehoshua, is an abbreviation of. Uh, uh, Jehovah is salvation. Okay, YHWH is salvation. Okay, so all these names that you even have uh, uh, in the English language that are derived from the Bible are revolving around these uh, these four consonants in some way. So um, I just thought that I'd, I'd point that out to you. So we're going to put though this part of the world and these and these. Um, uh, and this religious uh, um, history aside for a moment and we're going to go into something completely different recovering uh, Hinduism and um, to a certain extent Buddhism and uh, Jainism or Jainism um, and I, I think this will be hard for you to wrap your minds around but it'll also just be interesting so you know as I always try to remind you all in this class you don't have to memorize anything so what I like you to do is just take a deep breath and say, you know, you don't even have to get all of this, but you're getting exposed. You're getting an introduction. And now, you know, moving forward, when it comes to the history of India and we're looking more or less into the other parts of Asia, you're, you, will, you will have some um, greater insight and you won't be so afraid or you won't be so dazzled and just puzzled. And you can go in and learn more and get some deeper information. Um, so uh, I look forward to these next two sections as we go into the Far East. And that's where I spent uh, more time um, when I was traveling. Uh, uh, so uh, in any case, uh, I hope you are all having a great week. Please don't ever forget to approach me if you have any problems or issues. I am in the middle of a move. It's, it's a sl I'm slowly doing it. It's going to be like in about a month. So sometimes i'm a little distracted i'm trying to keep focus for you guys so don't be afraid to text me if it's under reasonable hours like you know after 11 and no later than 5 p.m and if you need a quick answer i'll try to take care of you as soon as possible um okay i think that's all i have to say and so yeah we'll be in touch if uh, you need anything and good luck with uh, the rest of the week